Environmentalists say it shouldn't be Indonesia's job to deal with illegal waste. Plastic waste from Britain that's supposed to be sent to Turkey for recycling is instead being dumped there and in some cases burnt. A second country in Asia is now vowing to ship Canada's trash back. Unscrupulous companies and organized criminals are capitalizing on plastic waste and engaging in illicit trade that crosses borders, posing serious criminal, environmental and health risks. They are sending waste to countries that don't have the facilities to recycle it, and it ends up getting dumped or burned, or sometimes it ends up floating in the sea. Hello, I'm Virginia Comolli, Research Manager at the Global Initiative Against the Transnational Organized Crime and author of the report Plastic for Profit. I'm going to talk to you about four ways to help prevent the illegal disposal of plastic waste. First of all, no country, environmental regulator or law enforcement agency can shoulder this challenge alone. Some steps have been successfully taken to allow national and regional agencies to share their knowledge about tackling waste crime. For example, the UK has formed the Joint Unit for Waste Crime, bringing together the environmental regulator, tax authorities and police agencies to exchange intelligence. Interpol has also established a National Environmental Security Task Force, which consists of police, customs, environmental agencies, prosecutors, non-governmental organizations and intergovernmental partners to focus efforts to disrupt environmental crime and organize crime groups in any given country. These projects allow different agencies to coordinate and investigate criminal activity by growing the ability to exchange intelligence. The support of the private sector is essential. Most companies do work hard to comply with environmental laws and regulations, despite often facing significant challenges from illegal competitors who are making a profit by evading environmental requirements. It is these companies, the ones who are abiding by the law, who can provide key insight into the threat of organized crime and ways to prevent it. To give you a very tangible example, industry could guide law enforcement about where illicit disposal takes place and they can help identify other red flags, such as by monitoring where there is demand for large empty spaces that could be used to store unwanted waste. The private sector can also suggest ways to encourage ethical behavior with supply chain partners. Companies that are taking steps to go beyond uh, compliance should be recognized and supported for their efforts. Digitalization of waste collection and management is already transforming the landscape and the introduction of digital waste tracking could be a game changer. This transformation is already underway, including in the UK. Its implementation will be mandatory and once rolled out, will eventually replace existing paperwork. Instead, it will track a cargo's journey in real time from start to finish. Technology can also support individuals in Indonesia. There are 3.7 million people who collect unsorted waste in the country. They are often informal, social stigmatized, underpaid workers who collect more waste than government facilities. New apps are now being created to link them directly to customers and allowing waste to be exchanged for cash or points to be redeemed. As long as the user has a smartphone, the apps could help improve the standing and financial stability of informal waste pickers. As a society, one could argue that we are more aware now than ever about environmental damage and protection. Across the world, we have seen campaigns, new legislation and international summits around these issues. But it's not all plain sailing. There is an imbalance between countries that produce the most waste and those that receive it. Judging by the experience of and impact on these communities in waste importing countries, there is still a lot to be done to achieve environmental justice. In other cases, laws might not be broken and crimes not committed because powerful industry groups manage to lobby a government to be more lenient towards the imports or exports of hazardous waste products. Civil societies, non-governmental organizations and activists all have the power to influence the public debate around environmental protection and in turn put pressure on the government to implement bans and stringent restrictions around waste management. If you want to learn more about illicit trading plastic waste and what can be done about it, read my report Plastic for Profit.